All right, gang, so we're going to do a video here on what's called the Wilcoxon Signed Rank Test. And this is another non-parametric test that can be used when you have paired data, but those paired samples do not meet the requirements of the paired t-test. So their differences are not normally distributed and their sample size, the number of pairs or the number of differences are not large enough to qualify for the central limit theorem. So this is a non-parametric test that can be used when the requirements for the paired t-test are not met. With a non-parametric test, like the Wilcoxon-Mann-Whitney test in chapter 7.10, this does not focus on means, right? It's non-parametric. For these non-parametric tests, the way that we state the hypothesis, because they are paired, we do focus on their differences. And with these paired tests, we focus on whether those, there is a difference represented by the number zero. And in the alternative, you know, if it's two-tailed, then you would say not equal. If you have some reason to do a directional, then you would indicate that. So that's how you would kind of state the hypothesis here for a Wilcoxon signed rank test. I would be much more descriptive, you know, in the context of a problem, I would say, you know, the differences before and after is zero, or the differences um, between A and B are zero. But here, I don't have any context yet. Let's contrast that when we do the paired t-test, the null and alternative hypothesis for the paired t-test, you need to mention the mean difference. And again, depending on what kind of alternative hypothesis you got, you would be, you would select one of those three. So I like to use symbols here, but if you prefer to use um, a statement, then you would have to say the mean difference in A versus B in before versus after is zero. And here you would restate that for the alternative, but maybe you would say is positive or less than zero. That's gonna be my brief intro here. And let's go pop into an example and I'm, we're gonna look at some data in R. All right, so I've opened up R here and I've got a data set loaded in. This data set measures what's called the myocardial blood flow in 10 subjects. And they had this measured before and after consuming a prescribed amount of caffeine. There was more details given in the study, but I think that's all we need to know for right now. So we've got these pairs, right? Each subject provided a before value and an after value. And they called it the baseline, which was pre-caffeine, and then afterwards they called it the caffeine, caffeinated amount. We've got paired data, so you might suspect we need to do a paired test, of course. And when possible, we want to use the paired t-test. Now, the sample size here is 10, right? 10 subjects, 10 pairs. In order to use the paired t-test, we need to compute these differences and check, are the differences normally distributed? So we can check that with a Shapiro test of the diffs. And I also like to look at a QQ plot because I like that visualization. I'm also gonna do the QQ plot. Now all of these put together, the QQ plot with the Shapiro test should give you some information about whether these differences are distributed approximately normally. Looking at this QQ plot, 
it looks a little troublesome, right? It may be right skewed. And again, those plots can be a little tough to interpret. The Shapiro test definitely allows us to lay down the hammer. Because the Shapiro-Wilk normality test resulted in a small p-value, these differences are not normally distributed. Furthermore, the number of pairs is 10, which is less than 30. We do not qualify to use the paired t-test because we do not meet the normality requirement for it. So we've set the stage now for why we cannot use a paired t-test. And if we're still going to compare this paired data of myocardial blood flow before and after consuming caffeine, that leaves us with the non-parametric test as our backup. So we're going to use the Wilcoxon signed rank test. Let's discuss the hypothesis that we would state for the Wilcoxon signed rank test. We would want to mention that there is no difference in the myocardial blood flow between the before and after values, that is, before and after the caffeine consumption. No difference. So if I was going to state the alternative hypothesis then, allow me to be a little lazy here, I would say that there is a difference in the myocardial blood flow before and after the caffeine consumption. I don't have any indication from the study that we should say that the myocardial blood flow increased after the consumption or decreased after, after the consumption. So I'm just going to go with a two-tailed, aka a non-directional alternative hypothesis here. So now we are ready to do the test. We know that we need to do a Wilcoxon signed rank test. I have pre-typed it here for all of our benefits here. And I'm going to run it and then we'll talk about the input and the output. Okay. So the code here is wilcox.test. I had my baseline vector in the MBF data frame, right? So I had to do MBF dollar baseline, and then I did comma MBF dollar caffeine. And if we didn't say that the paired, there was a paired design, it would end up doing the wrong test. It would do the Wilcoxon Man Whitney test. So that's really what's different, different here from what we saw in our previous Wilcox style tests. So Wilcoxon signed rank test. Um, there's a warning message here. Just go ahead and disregard that. Don't worry about that. What we're going to focus on is this p-value. Since that p-value is 0 0.03, that is less than our usual alpha, which is 0.05. So what should our conclusion be? We would reject the null hypothesis, indicating that there is evidence for the alternative hypothesis, i.e. that there is a difference in myocardial blood flow before and after the caffeine consumption. What if we had neglected to include this statement right here that says paired equals true. What if we had, this would be the wrong test. If we had done this Wilcox test, but without that paired equals true, then this would be the Wilcoxon Man Whitney test from chapter 7.10. And that assumes that there are independent samples that would ignore the paired designs. We saw how that would focus on a different aspect of the data, and so that would be incorrect. 
And you'll notice that this incorrect test gave a completely different conclusion, big p-value, than the correct test up here. That's not always going to happen, but that's not unlikely to occur either. So that is the Wilcoxon signed rank test, which applies to paired data that do not meet the paired t-test requirements. We will look at paired data in R in complete detail in lab number 10. See you there.